Hey there, young grasshoppers, and welcome back to the Optimize Self Show, the show that's all about helping you rediscover your health, upgrade your fitness, and or optimize your wellness, all while having fun kicking ass through lifestyle design. For those of you tuning in for the first time, they're first time viewers, uh, basically this is very much a, at least usually Q and A type of format. You supply the questions, I supply the answers, or at least attempt to. And uh, actually on that note, I wanted to take uh, just a moment today and um, and well thank everyone for that's listening and watching and that have listened and watched to past episodes of the Optimize Self show. I guess we're let's see 28 episodes in. Uh, thank you very much for listening and watching and a special thanks goes out to those of you that have joined the Optimize Self dojo, um, which is basically kind of the the private, I guess you can call it accountability slash support group, also gives you access to what I refer to as the Optimize Self Arsenal, which are guides and video tutorials that basically take you by the hand and show you step by step on how to optimize each of the seven foundations of your health, breathing, hydration, sleep, nutrition, stress, movement, exercise, as well as things like your environment and mindset, which are obviously always influencing those seven foundations of health that I just previously mentioned. Uh, we do weekly live trainings in there every Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, during which I'm on live and you can come on video live with me or submit questions that I can answer live on there. You know, we have a lot of fun in there, but I'm really, really thankful for everyone, whether you're in the dojo or, you know, you're just asking me questions here on the show or that, uh, uh, you know, like, like, uh, Michelle today, she took the optimized self test. Um, thank you to everybody for, for listening, for watching, for interacting, and definitely special thanks to those, uh, that have purchased memberships to the optimized self dojo. Uh, you know, that's, that's really how all of this is funded, as well as I guess I should even give a special, special shout out to uh, my uh, my my one on one session clients, uh, my ninjas and ninjas, as well as those that keep me on as a retainer, because that's what finances all this, and that's what makes it possible. I will add in um, for I've made one more available way for people to to support the show to contribute, and that is a simple PayPal donate page, uh, which you can actually get to by going to optimizeself.ninja. I'm going to put the URL up in just a moment, but it's optimizeself.ninja forward slash support uh, and you can donate you know as as much or as little as as you want any amount would be very very much appreciated uh, you can make it a one-time payment or you can make it a monthly recurring payment whatever you feel is right um, but I always kind of point people towards the dojo especially right now that you can get in for such a low low cost I believe the going price right now is 22 dollar 22 or 23 and the reason I say I believe is because um, there might have been a membership sold uh, in the last half day or so and with every membership that it that sells the price does go up and right now it's a one-time payment eventually it's going to go to a annual quarterly and monthly membership but right now you can get in for as little as like I said I think about 22 23 dollars right now um, and as much as I appreciate people making donations I'd always rather give you something of value in this case membership to the dojo rather than simply you know I, I would uh, graciously appreciate any financial support uh, but I'd much rather give you something in return and the dojo there's a lot of bang for your buck there a lot of value uh, just in the first year there's three thousand six hundred and fifty dollars worth of value so for 22 23 dollars uh, you know if you're gonna make a donation I would say do that because I would love to be able to give you access uh, to all of that so anyways thank you everyone who has already joined the dojo thank you to those of you who have donated thank you to everyone who's taken the optimized self test that send in questions uh, all this would not be possible without you so thank you very much uh, and with that, uh, let's get into what we got coming up on the show today. Uh, let's see, Michelle struggles to find enough time to move more and exercise because of her job that requires her to sit for long periods of time. So we uncover the fallacy that is the 
you can't see me right now, you'll see me in just a moment, but I'm doing air quotes here, little bunny air quotes, uh, what's known as the work-life balance. You know, I, I think we all have kind of come to realize that's a fallacy, and instead we go over how to achieve work-life integration, or better yet, work-life harmony. Um, let's see, Jeremy, who's a young and athletic kickboxer, deals with a frustrating, uneven squat, kind of a sliding hips when he squats down over to one side, uh, scoliosis and grinding shoulders, but that's, you know, not nothing, that's not anything that a few corrective exercise routines and modifications to daily habits can't fix, so we go over that. And last but certainly not least, uh, five weeks ago, Rohan slipped a couple of lumbar discs and is now struggling with and hesitant to try touching his toes due to what his PT tells him are very tight hamstrings. But as you and I know, that the side of the pain is really, if ever, the cause. And you can feed slack to the body by working what's above, below, and around what you want to improve the function of. So we go over that and help Ro Rohan out with that. Um, so with that, let me take down this intro slide, wave hi to everybody. I think behind me, very passively joining me today, is our canine co-host. Carmen over there, she's uh, just got back from a long walk, so she's taking it easy, but she may be up and about later on. And let me throw up that lower third I was talking about earlier, so you know where to find me. Give me one second here to put that up. Uh, all right. I thought I got pretty good at this, doing this really fast. And there we go. All right. So that's me, Justin Archer, AKA Sensei, and you can find me over at OptimizeSelf.Ninja. Um, I can put later on if, or I'll mention it later on. Um, again, I would love to see each and every one of you inside the, the dojo, um, but if you don't feel like that's a good fit for you, that's fine. Um, but if you're looking for a way maybe other than that to support the show, uh, you can just go to OptimizeSelf.Ninja forward slash support, all right? Um, and actually, eh, I'll leave that up there for now. Okay, so with that, let me grab some water. All those that you've seen the show before, you know the Optimize Self hydration drinking game. When I drink water, you drink water too. And we'll get to uh, the first topic of the day, all right? <clears throat> Cheers. All right, so. Michelle, and Michelle is a follow-up questioner uh, from episode 27, just this past episode. Uh, she took the Optimize Self test. So first, Michelle, thank you very much for following up with me and taking the test. Uh, I really appreciate and, and I want to acknowledge you, know, you for, for taking that next step. Uh, that's the that is the next step. That's the big. That's a big part of it. So, uh, in the optimize self test, I always ask people to to kind of evaluate, self evaluate how they believe they're doing in the seven foundations of health: uh, breathing, hydration, sleep, nutrition, stress, uh, exercise, as well as movement and mindset. And uh, and Michelle did this, and. You know, the ones I like to focus on are the ones that are, you know, a five and below. Um, obviously, when I work with people inside the group and everything, we go much deeper and wider to this. But on the show, I like to really go for what's the low hanging fruit? What, you know, if, uh, if, if uh, nutrition is someone's a nine out of a 10, sure, going to a 10 out of 10 would improve them. But if their breathing is a two out of 10, if we can bring their, from a two to a six, that's going to have a much greater impact on their overall well-being. So the ones that Michelle scored lowest on was exercise uh, at two, uh, nutrition at three, and stress at four. All the others were five and above, or actually six and above. So that's that's good news. And I always ask people when they self-evaluate, I always ask them, you know, how do you know what you know? By which I mean, what is the measuring stick that you're using to determine how you're doing in those foundations of health? And 
Michelle says, uh, I drink water throughout the day. Uh, water is the only beverage I drink other than a glass of milk each morning. I do not do so well with nutrition. I often find myself eating out rather than preparing meals at home. I am now incorporating some movement slash flexibility into my daily routine. However, I do not get regular exercise, in parentheses, she says cardio. Uh, I usually sleep about seven to eight hours each night without waking during the night. My job situation does create a good, good bit of stress for me and I know that this is an area where I need to improve. Um, so keeping in mind those numbers, uh, exercise two, nutrition three, stress four, uh, and and you know what Michelle said is in terms of you know how does she know what she knows? How did what was her basis for gauging herself on a scale from one to ten, ten being the best uh, in each of those foundations of health? I would say you know, drinking water throughout the day is very good. So Michelle, definitely keep that up. Um, but try measuring and tracking it for a week to see just precisely how much you're actually consuming in a day. And the reason I think this is important is because a lot of times when I ask people, especially when we're, you're trying to uh, troubleshoot or diagnose something, something's wrong and you're trying to improve something, or something's good but you want to take it to the next level, you want to improve upon it, you want to make progress, um, data is very important because if you're not testing, you're just guessing and you end up wasting a lot of time, money, and, and effort. Uh, believe me, I've learned the hard way. Um, so with water, it's one of those things that I find people easily kind of lie to themselves about and of course not on purpose right because we all want the best for ourselves um, but oftentimes I'll ask people how much water do you drink and they say oh I drink plenty of or I drink a lot of water and I always kind of jokingly respond I said oh that's great I said you know it's interesting my wife and I we travel we've been traveling nonstop for the past three and a half years all over the world internationally and I said I see measuring cups with with ounces, with cups, with liters, milliliters, and all you know, all kinds of different uh, uh, you know measuring types. And I said, I never see on a measuring cup a lot of or plenty of. And then by that time, they usually kind of get it. And I said, yeah, because it's all very vague and very relative. You know, if you're someone who drank one cup of water, and Michelle, I know this isn't you. I'm just kind of using this this story as an example. If you're someone who drank one cup of water per day and then for the past week or two or month you drank two cups of water well you doubled your water intake and in comparison to the one cup of water you're drinking plenty of water or a lot of water but if you're 200 pound a 200 pound person then guess what two cups isn't enough you should be drinking bare minimum 100 ounces and i'm just using 200 pounds because my math is terrible um if you're 200 pounds, you should be drinking bare minimum 100 ounces of water per day. And obviously, two cups of water is not enough. And so there's oftentimes I've found where I go, oh, I'm drinking plenty of water or a lot of water. And I realize, you know what? I actually haven't been tracking that. So it's not fair to say. I can speculate and kind of, you know, you get a feel for how much water have you been drinking. But unless you're actually measuring, you can't say for certain. So I would suggest, like I said, for a week is, you know, use a, a water bottle of some sort that you know the measurement of. And you can either do it kind of the old, I call it the old fashioned tech way of just, you know, making tally marks. How many bottles did you drink? Make sure you're regularly consuming half your body weight in ounces of water per day, more on days that you're more active that, or that you perspire or that you have to talk a lot because, you know, moisture comes out of your mouth when you talk. Um, or you can do kind of more the high tech way and use an app. Um, one of my favorites is water logged, uh, water, like water spelled and then L O G G E D. Uh, there's a free version and then there's like an in-app purchase for one or $2. You can start out with a free one. Um, there's plenty of others out there, uh, but that happens to be my favorite. I've tried a lot of them and there's a lot of good ones, but that's my personal favorite. Uh, um, but use that and really check and see, are you getting, um, as much water in as you really Think you you might you might be getting more, but you also might not be getting enough, and so I think that week of of measuring and tracking your your hydration, your water intake, uh, you know should 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 be eye opening. So give that a shot. Um, but sounds like you're doing well on that. Uh, also, uh, we're talking about uh, using water log to measure your hydration. 
inside the dojo that I made reference to earlier, the kind of uh, private group that I have for uh, my fellow ninjas and ninjas looking to optimize themselves, looking to become the best version of themselves possible, I have in there um, a, a resource called uh, the kick butt list of self-optimization apps and this is a list of apps that I use mostly most of them are iOS uh, based so for Apple uh, mobile device products uh, but some of them are Android as well and these are apps that I use on a regular basis or I recommend uh, my clients and those that keep me on as retainer to use to test measure and track each of the foundations of their health and these are things, oh my gosh, I wish I would have had access to 13 plus years ago when I started trying to figure all this out because it would have saved me a lot of time, money, and effort. Um, so anything I can do to help others streamline that process and avoid some of the, the common pitfalls uh, and mistakes, some of which people are not even aware that they could make, I definitely want to make people aware. So uh, if you decide to join me and the other ninjas and ninjas inside the dojo, definitely take a look at that, the kick butt list of self-optimization apps, okay? Um, Let's see. Let's go in here. Mm. Uh, also, I would recommend using an elimination diet, not as a lifestyle, that's how you eat forever, but as a diagnostic tool to determine whether or not you're sensitive to dairy. Because you did say that you have milk on a regular basis. Um, but see if you're sensitive to dairy, as well as some of the other common culprits I see that people have food intolerances to, things like gluten, corn, soy, eggs, uh, peanuts, uh, dairy, like we mentioned, and then sugar and artificial sweeteners. Um, because statistically speaking, most people are. You you may you may not be. Um, I know I am, and I know a good majority of people are, especially especially Americans. Um, I don't know. I'm Michelle, so I don't know where you uh, where you happen to live. Um, but yeah, use an elimination diet. And again, I can't stress this enough, elimination diet is not a lifestyle, it's not how you eat the whole time. You do it for a certain period of time, you should go through the whole process takes two months, you know, a month and a half to two months, and then you can determine what foods are harming you, almost like how kryptonite does to Superman. You can eliminate those from your diet because you don't want to be poisoning yourself. And understand, I'm not talking about food allergies um, like some people get that are allergic to peanuts, and if it touches their lips, they swell up and they need like a to jab themselves with an EpiPen or go to the ER. Um, these are foods. Th those obviously you'll know about food allergies. When I talk about food sensitivities or food intolerances, these are foods that cause low levels of systemic inflammation in your body and can manifest themselves uh, in various ways from, from joint pain to skin issues to digestive issues to decline cognitive performance um, to autoimmune uh, diseases. Um, the list goes on and on and on and on. Um, but definitely check that out. And you know what I always tell people is, hey, do you know if you're sensitive to this food? And if they say, if if they say I don't know, uh, then I always tell them I said, well, let's assume you are until with some evidence like elimination diet um, in conjunction maybe with the Coca Pulse test or a blood test like Leap MRT, for example. There's others um, that we can prove that you're not because I'd rather err on the side of safety and let's again assume you are instead of going assuming you're not because again I've done that and I've seen other people do that and find out oh, it's this food you've been consuming. And maybe it's a food that you thought was healthy for you, like a dairy product or eggs, which if you don't have any sensitivities to are healthy eggs. If you're looking at just the macronutrients, protein, carbs, sugars, yada, 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 they could be good for you. But if for whatever reason, you know, epigenetics or, or whatever, uh, you're sensitive to a particular food, it doesn't matter how good it looks on the surface if it's harming you, you need to get that out of there. And so I always tell people, until you can prove otherwise, just assume you are sensitive to those seven foods on some level until you've proven otherwise, like I said, through an elimination diet, Coca Pulse test, um, or something like a LEAP MRT, like a blood test. Um, and I go a lot deeper and wider on exactly how to do this inside the Optimize Self Dojo, uh, inside the Optimizing Your Nutrition module. So also make sure to check that out. Um, let's see. You talked about, where was it in here? 
uh, not getting enough regular exercise and cardio. We'll have some good news. Um, cardio, although important, is highly overrated. Uh, study after study after study has shown that HIIT training or high intensity training, also known as burst training, gives you much more bang for your buck in terms of results for time and effort spent. Uh, it also trains your body to burn fat rather than glucose and sugars. So the only time that uh, lower intensity, longer duration type of cardio like um, long runs or you know 45 minutes an hour on a treadmill or elliptical or something is useful is if you're an athlete training for long distance. It's almost like building a skill then. Um, but unless that's you, if you're just trying someone to try to be healthy and fit, um, honestly, uh, you don't you you don't really. Most people need any more than about 10 to 30 minutes of exercise per day, and that's not even every day. That's maybe five six days out of the week. Um, so yeah, a lot of people are surprised to find that yeah you just don't need as much especially when you've addressed and by address i don't mean have perfect but i would say 80 percent or above that you've addressed your breathing hydration sleep nutrition uh stress and movement then you don't need to be uh as strict or do as much put as much time and effort in exercise okay uh you get much more results out of it as a result. Um, let's see, you talked about sleep. I would say keep up the good work with sleep. Uh, the only thing I might suggest practicing is a little conscious uh, diaphragmatic breathing immediately prior to bed in the static back position to reduce stress. Um, and I will make sure to include a link in the show notes over on YouTube in the description area. It'll say mention links and there'll be one for static back. Basically, if I were to demonstrate this a little bit, is Carmen still back there? Yeah, Carmen's back there. Um, basically, <laughs> and you go pick it up. If you were to lay on your back with your legs at a 90 degree angle, um, and basically have like a chair or an ottoman here, and just relax on your back with your arms out at a 90 to 45 degree angle from your shoulders or your torso, that's basically what static back is. But I'll still include a link uh, to a video tutorial on how to do it. Uh, of my wife and I showing you how to get into position. It's pretty simple. That's pretty much it that I just showed you. Um, and while you're there, you wanna practice conscious diaphragmatic breathing, by which I mean you're gonna breathe in and out through your nose uh, at a one to two inhale to exhale, inhale to exhale ratio. Uh, one, breathing in through your nose will help trigger your diaphragm. And I'll show you quickly what that looks like. So if you put your hands on your hips like Superman or Wonder Woman, put them just above there and inhale. Notice how my hands expand outward, east to west. That's what you wanna go for, all right? So it's not just belly breathing, so if you're on your back, your belly's going this way. You wanna breathe kind of in a three-dimensional way. So almost like as if you were blowing up a, a balloon for a party and, you, and the balloon expanded in your hand. Think about that happening in your diaphragm. And a lot of times people that deal with a lot of stress, which is the majority of people nowadays, let's be honest, um, they have compromised breathing mechanics, meaning that they're not breathing with their primary breathing muscle, their diaphragm. Instead, they're breathing with their secondary or auxiliary breathing muscles up in their chest, shoulders, and neck area. And if you factor in that the average human takes 22, roughly 22 to 30,000 breaths per day, well, that's a lot of suboptimal breathing that's happening. That means you're not getting a sufficient enough amount of blood and oxygen to your brain and your other extremities. That means that if you're not breathing here and you're breathing here, that means 22 to 30,000 tiny shoulder shrugs you're doing. No wonder a lot of people hold so much tension and, and ultimately pain you know, up in their trapezius muscles and their neck uh, and their shoulders and their upper back. It's because they're doing 22 to 30,000 tiny shoulder shrugs per day. Um, so that's huge, the diaphragmatic breathing. The one to two inhale to exhale ratio, the reason for that is because that has been shown to kind of like on a, on a dimmer switch to dim down, uh, to calm your central nervous system. So this is great to do before bed, all right? Um, sorry, I lost my spot here. I had some notes down here for you. Um, so yeah, that's the conscious diaphragmatic breathing, and I would suggest doing that 
immediately prior to going to bed. So have your teeth brushed, showered, and everything, and just do that for about three to five minutes right before you get into bed, okay? It'll help, like I said, kind of de-stress you through the central, uh, through through calming the central nervous system. Um, it'll help train your body on how to breathe properly. But also the static back position uh, that I showed you will help place your hips and pelvis in a neutral position and it'll help segmentally extend all your vertebra from your lower, mid, and upper back all the way to your neck and head. And using the, the floor as a kind of ruler, it'll help remove rotation from your hips and your torso. And it's like hitting the reset button on your posture. That way you're bringing a better aligned body to bed with you. A lot of people don't think of sleeping as an activity like they would soccer. Most people would do some sort of warm up, whether it be stretching or kind of warming up movements uh, before just going out and playing soccer because to warm up, right? Well, sleeping uh, is an activity. It's, it's maybe more of obviously a passive one, but if you think about it, you're putting your, your body, uh, I think by your own admins, seven, eight hours, right? You sleep per night. Uh, but for most people, six to nine, so for you, seven to eight hours. And we have to keep in mind that the body is a stimulus response organism that responds to stimulus 24-7 without prejudice. So it's what you do the majority of the time that matters, not your best intentions. And if you're already kind of thinking ahead of me, you're absolutely right. Sleeping, the position you sleep in, uh, the quality of your sleep is going to matter more than exercise because you sleep more every not just you but everybody does or should more than they exercise if you don't that's a whole nother problem um, so so you want to make sure that you're sleeping in a good position um, usually sleep on your slide naturally leads to asymmetries elevated hips shoulders things like that um, spinal issues like scoliosis and stuff like that um, for most people, most of the time, and granted this could be customized to the individual, usually what I find that works out best is sleeping on the back with either zero to one pillow under the head, something really small. Obviously you want to make sure that your neck isn't hyperextended. And then placing one to two, in some extreme cases three, but usually one to two pillows under the knee and lower leg. Then what that'll do is put your body in almost kind of a mini version of the static back that I just showed you. So that way it's unloading the hips and pelvis as well as the lower back while you sleep um, and still allowing you to lay in your back so everything is symmetrical when you wake up. So try that sleeping position too. On your back, zero to one pillow under the head, one to two pillow under the knee and lower leg. All right, um, let's see here. Mm -mm -mm. We went over, let's see, we went over the exercise. And I think I already told you, um, yeah, we talked about the optimizing your nutrition module found inside the dojo. So uh, if you if you do join, which I definitely recommend you do, uh, check that out for more nutrition. And also the optimizing your stress module, all right? And I made a couple notes to, we talked about for nutrition, the elimination diet. Um, and basically that's, again, a diagnostic tool to help you determine what foods are harming you. So you can obviously eliminate those from your diet and then what foods are replenishing you so you can eat more of those, the foods that are making you better. Um, we talked about the stress. We went over diet conscious diaphragmatic breathing. Um, and we talked about doing it immediately prior to, to bedtime to kind of uh, tone down your central nervous system to help you calm uh, down before bed. You can also do that throughout other parts of the day. And to improve your breathing, I would recommend you know roughly 15 minutes total per day. And let me emphasize total per day. You do not have to take 15 minutes out of your day to, to do that. It could be a minute here. It could be three minutes there. Actually, as little as three breaths uh, have been shown to have a significant impact on your stress. Actually, breathing is the simplest and fastest, probably the most efficient way of, of training your stress response. So, you know, if you're at work or elsewhere in life and you find yourself really stressed and pent up, even as little as three breaths, and especially using that one to two inhale to exhale ratio, in and out through your nose, will help lower your stress levels. And, you, and I've done this time and time again with a heart rate monitor on, 
done like high intensity exercise or thought something really angry or mean or upsetting, watch my heart rate go up, take three breaths and it drastically reduced. And it's really neat to see that you have the power to influence and control your stress response. A lot of people think that that knee jerk reaction, the flight or fight response is just innate in us and there's nothing you can do to control it. That's actually not true. You can control your flight or flight, that yeah, flight and <laughs> or fight response. Um, and it's really neat to be able to do that. So you can do that, that diaphragmatic breathing, um, throughout the day. And um, one more note on exercise. The results you get from exercise are limited by the quality of your other foundations of health. Uh, I mentioned them before, but things like breathing, hydration, sleep, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so focus on them first and remember that total health and fitness and your overall well-being, it's a cumulative. So you can break up your workout time uh, throughout the day with small short bursts of high intensity exercise or just more movement, which we're going to get into a little bit later. Exercise, I think, unfortunately, society has adapted this ideal that exercise you have to make time for. You have to take out time. You have to go to a place, aka a gym. You have to put on gym clothes. You have to do gym things. You have to do sets and reps and time this and that. And I'm not saying that stuff is bad. But unfortunately, I think a lot of people believe that's the one and only way to do, do it, and it's it, it just isn't. It's one way, but it's not, which doesn't make it right or wrong. For some people, it's very right, but for other people, it's very wrong, and that I think it's important that people know that there's more than, than one way to go about it, all right? Um, so let's fast forward here a little bit to where I ask on the test, you know, is there anything else that you feel, think, or believe is contributing to holding you back from being your optimized self. Uh, Michelle answered, I feel that lack of exercise slash movement combined with a stressful job situation is my biggest issue. Um, so some things I know I'm gonna be kind of repeating on here, but I think that repetition is important. Um, that's why probably if you watch a couple episodes back, you'll see me repeating things and that's not by accident. It's because um, there are important things that need to be repeated. Um, so let's see, what can you do about a lack of exercise and movement uh, combined with stressful job situation? Well, you can incorporate regular breathing and movement habits. Uh, you can also refer to them as rit um, rituals as well in your day-to-day -to -day -day routine uh, to lower stress levels while simultaneously decreasing the amount of exercise you require. We kind of touched upon this a little earlier. Uh, same goes for doing shorter, more intense exercise instead of longer duration, lower intensity exercise. Um, I'm actually curious to know, um, to, to find out a little bit more about this and definitely Michelle, um, feel free to reach out to me again and, uh, you know, hopefully inside the dojo, but what is your current job situation? Cause you mentioned that being, um, a good amount of source of stress. And I think everyone would agree with, can sympathize with Michelle's, um, situation because our jobs, our careers, our businesses, it's what we spend, you know, a, a good amount of the time, if not the majority of our time on. So I think it's important to ask yourself, you know, how excited are you to, to go to your, let's call it work, uh, each day, whether it is a job, a career, a business, whatever it is, you know, Michelle and anyone else watching, whatever it is you happen to do for a living. Um, how excited are you to go to that place each day? And how fulfilled do you feel each day when you come home from work or when you're done with work? If you're, you know, like me and my wife and you work from home, at the end of the day, how fulfilled do you feel from, from what it is that you do each day? And, you know, think long and hard about this, um, you know, and about, you know, is what you're currently doing in line with your why? Basically, you know, and by why, I mean the reason that you think, feel, and or believe that you were born, that you were put here on this earth to do. Um, because like I made mention to earlier, you know, our, our jobs, our careers, our businesses take up an awful big portion amount of our time of our lives and therefore has a huge impact on our overall happiness and well-being. So this is something, you know, from time to time I've branched off and talked on and it's, I get kind of 50, 50, um, 
mixed opinions on it. Some people are very grateful for me talking to others, especially when I was coming from the postureguide.com, you know, thought, hey, you should just stick to just posture and everything. Um, but obviously I think, you know, finding something that you are passionate about doing and that, and you know, something that you do to provide value or to serve others and that you enjoy when you find what you enjoy and what's valuable to others and you kind of do a, what was it called? The not Zen, Venn diagram, you know, where they cross over, hopefully I'm getting that right, uh, where those two meet basically is important to, to find that out. Um, you know, a really good book, I can't remember the author right now, is um, Start With Why. I'm forgetting, the, I'm forgetting the author's name. Carmen, do you know what it is? She can't recall either. Um, but that's a really good one. And finding out, you know, what it is you think you, you were put here on this earth to, to do and then make sure that everything you do in life, no matter how you go about doing it, is in service to that thing. Um, and like I said, it, I, I think it's a huge part of our lives. You know, it's what we spend a good amount of it on. So obviously it's gonna have a huge impact on our overall uh, health, our overall happiness. Um, so it's important. Uh, so Michelle, uh, please, uh, you know, feel free to, to contact me again on that. And uh, there's actually a number of things inside the, the dojo, um, some tools that I've uh, included in there as part of the membership to kind of help people along with that, because I do think it's such an important part of people's lives, making sure you're doing something that you enjoy, that makes you happy, and that gives you a sense of fulfillment. And also that doesn't stress you out. Maybe, maybe gives you you stress, the good type of stress, but not distress, the type of bad stress we all want to avoid. Uh, let's see, when I asked Michelle, when it comes to your health, fitness, and or wellness, what is the biggest problem or issue that you struggle with or have in the past? Give me one second. I need to grab some water here. Lips are dried out. Let's see. Uh, Michelle says, my biggest issue is finding the time to allow for quality exercise slash movement. Usually when I get home from work, I'm so exhausted that exercise is the last thing on my mind. I've tried getting up a little earlier to fit it in, but I am not a morning person at all. So um, to which I would say, you know, if you've addressed your breathing, your hydration, your sleep, your nutrition, your stress, and your movement, and again, you don't have to be perfect in those, I would shoot for 80% or above. There really isn't any need to do more than roughly 20 10 to 30 minutes uh, of exercise per day, unless you're a competitive athlete. Uh, we went over high intensity, shorter duration workouts are far more effective and efficient than low intensity, long duration. So there's no need to do, you know, an hour plus of cardio per day. Like I said, unless you're trained for a marathon or something, and actually you don't even have to do it at that rate. I know many, many people who run marathons uh, and never trained more than about 30, 40 minutes for it uh, other than the day they ran the marathon. Um, let's see. The other thing I would advise is make better movement and positioning choices. Uh, doing so doesn't require any more time. And a couple examples I'll throw out to you is instead of sitting on a chair, uh, try sitting on the floor or squatting. I don't know if you notice here, I am sitting uh, on the floor. I got one leg up and then the other, I'm kind of on my shin and you notice I've been switching back and forth between. You can also go into, you know, now I'm in a squat position. I won't move the camera down so I don't subject you to a, a crotch shot or anything. But you know, now my knees are out to the sides here if you can see and I'm upright. Uh, you can sit, you know, there's many ways to sit on the ground. You can sit in a diva pose where one leg is out, one leg is turned in. You can switch to the other side. And if you think about it, uh, and, and please, I hope no one takes this, if you're a yoga instructor, if you take yoga, is anything bad about yoga, I think it's great. But think about yoga. A lot of people pay to go in a room and sit in different sitting positions. I know there's more to it than that. Uh, on the floor and they take time out of their day they, to, make, to, to take time to do that and they pay for it. Well, what if when you were home and you were watching TV or when you're eating, you you sat in in half lotus or lotus if you're more flexible or a diva pose or cross-legged or kind of like a frog position? And, you know, what if you just did that? You know, 
you, you've been given permission by a yoga instructor in the past, or maybe you currently are taking yoga, um, and you and you do that now. So why not just do that at home? Uh, so that's one way. You know, it doesn't necessarily take you more time. You know, if you were to uh, sit down in a chair to eat any of your meals, you know, do it on the on the floor. You're just making a different choice. It's not taking you any more time, and it takes far more postural muscles uh, to to sit on the floor in different positions upright than it does to simply put yourself in a chair and allow your the chair to hold you in in various positions all right so and and there's actually just listening to a podcast about living to be more than a hundred and they've shown that um, <laughs> You know, as much as we want to, as much as there's good intentions of using exercise to better people, overall it's been, let's be honest, a failure. And instead, it's it's environmental um, nudges that cause people to be healthier. You know, why is there, you know, far more overweight people, you know, where there's less public transport is because they're driving everywhere, even short distances, just a few blocks. Then you look at New York or a lot of... Um, my wife and I frequently go to Europe. She's from Poland, and we go there. They have two aisles of straight chocolate and candy bars, and there is barely any obese people there. Why? Because not everybody, but everybody walks a lot more than Americans. Or in New York, for example, where you know everybody walks uh, everywhere because it's hard and or expensive to have a car there and drive around. So it's those. You know, I always tell people, try to modify your environment to be conducive of whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Um, another one, another example is instead of bringing your head down and forward to look at your, your mobile device, let me get you kind of more of a better side view here. You know, a lot of people, it's down here and they're like this. Well, what is that? Let me bring that down a little bit. Obviously, your shoulders are around, your upper back's around and forward, your head's down and forward. And that's all very painful. So how about instead of bringing your head down and forward to your device, you bring your device up and back to your head, and now you're, you know, like this. So one is detrimental to your health. One is beneficial. And a lot of people will just say mobile devices, they're all around bad. I would make the argument, no, the way that most people use them is bad, but there are good or better ways to go about using them. Isn't that right, Carmen? I don't know if you can see. There we go. Carmen, say hi to Michelle and the nice people. <laughs> She's our little foster pup that we're fostering. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, we talked about you know driving. Uh, you know if there's somewhere nearby, a local store you have to go to. Instead of driving there, you know, walk or bike. And, you know, unless you're getting obviously like Costco uh, shopping and you can't carry that much back, but if it's only a bag or two, you know, take it there. You're still getting chores and errands done, but you're incorporating movement. And if you, you can also qualify it as exercise into your life. Um, here's a challenge I always recommend people do is. Take, go for a day without using furniture the way it was intended. So by all means, you can use a chair, but don't sit on it. Maybe put your laptop on it and sit on the ground and work from there. Um, you know, eat while sitting on the floor and put your, your, um, your, your dish on that chair or an ottoman or a coffee table. Um, you know, work and eat standing, um, but just don't use furniture because Furniture will, um, and there's some behind us, this is not ours, uh, this is not where we <laughs> regularly reside, um, but furniture, it, it entices you to use it, to sit down, um, and, and unfortunately your body will adapt to whatever you do the most, not your best intentions, and so if you put yourself in a chair, um, it's going to take on almost like casting. It's going to cast your body in different positions as well as you're going to use far less muscle to hold your body in different positions and therefore uh, burn less calories. Lower metabolism means you know that's more that you have to make up for and make time to exercise. Um, and some, one more important thing um, I'll make reference to is a lot of people try to find this work-life balance, okay? And I think that's, that's kind of the wrong 
thing because to me there there is no work time or play time or exercise time there's just time you know and we do you know we prioritize and say okay i'm gonna spend my time doing this because it's more important maybe because it's for a loved one maybe it's because yeah for work obviously we all have to you know make a, a certain amount of uh money so instead of trying to find a work-life balance, I would say instead try to find a way to integrate your work and your life. You know, at the at the office, more and more offices I know are coming to the conclusion that uh, they can lower, uh, you know, their, their health insurance for the employees by them taking better care of themselves. So standing desks, and not to say you should stand all day, but going from sitting to standing, um, having that option is good if you can do that. Um, you know that'd be great or you know working from the floor all these things they, they don't take more time they just take doing different things making a different choice instead of wearing a regular uh, heel a positive heel shoe and I don't just mean high heels but a shoe where your heel is above your toes um, you know and that thrusting your hips forward and causing like lower back and hip pain wear a neutral or negative heel shoe and you know, then you don't have to spend 20, 30 minutes a day doing uh, postural corrective exercise. To correct that. You just put on a different shoe. You're gonna put on a shoe anyways. Why not just put on a different shoe? Um, easy peasy. So, so yeah, look at more instead of work-life balance. Look at work-life integration, or better yet, work-life harmony, where, where how you work. Um, improves or positively influences the way you live and the way you live positively influences the way you work all right and again i'd definitely be interested to know more about what your working situation is so that way i can give kind of more um accurate more specific advice to your unique situation um i think uh, carmen was trying to chime in there with some answers uh, michelle also asked what are the most important exercises that a person who sits all day can do that's easy don't sit <laughs> um, that may not be the answer you're looking for, but I'm serious. Um, a lot of people try to out exercise, you know, oh, I sit, so I have to do these exercises. And there are some very helpful exercises, but none of them can make up for, you know, you can't do 30 minutes of exercise to make up for eight hours of sitting. And I've seen this time and time again uh, with people is, um, they, we put such an emphasis on exercise uh, in society because I think we've been indoctrinated, we've been we've been brainwashed to to put exercise on a pedestal as the one and only way to get from where we are now to where we want to be in terms of health, fitness, and wellness. Um, what's up, Carmen? Um, that that's what people fo they get fixated on. And what I would recommend, and please hear me, exercise is important, but it's not the most important thing. Actually, I would go the opposite and say it's the least important thing in terms of those seven foundations of health. Um, and, uh, you know, I would advise people focus less on exercise and more on living better, making better choices. And, and those that understand the synergistic power of the foundations of health, your breathing, the quality of your breathing, hydration, sleep, nutrition, stress, and movement, once you realize the center's value and power that those have together, then you stack exercise on top of that, you'll get much more of your exercise and you'll have to do far less exercise. But a lot of people don't understand that and so they're just spinning the wheels, exercise, 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 more, 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 and they don't go anywhere. It's a bummer. I hate to see people struggle with that. Um, it's like trying to, hey, what's up? Um, it's like trying to accelerate you know, at the, the light turns green, trying to accelerate with your handbrake and your other brake on, you know, like with, with it in park, with your emergency brake on and with your other foot on the pedal. You're not going to go anywhere. At least you're not going to go anywhere fast and you'll damage your car. In this case, your body. So don't sit, stand more, walk more, move more, transition from one position to the other more. A lot of people ask, what's the best sitting position? My answer is always the same. Your next position is always your best position. Don't become stagnant in any one position for many more than roughly 20 minutes, um, which was actually my next point I had down here. Um, so yeah, don't get stuck in, in any one position for more than 20 minutes. Transition to a standing desk. Uh, you can also try making calls and having meetings while walking, uh, ideally outside. 
on a treadmill if need be, if, you know, maybe you live somewhere where the weather is not that good, but outside is definitely preferable. Um, and I've said this before, but I'll definitely say it again. You know, remember that the human body is a stimulus response organism that's responding to stimulus 24 seven without prejudice. So it's what you do the majority of the time that matters the most, not your best intentions. So focus less on exercise and more on living better since living is what you do the majority of the time and thus has a greater impact on your overall overall well-being than exercise alone just to be clear so you know i always kind of do this as a uh, i don't know kind of disclaimers that people don't attack me that look exercise is important i love anatomy kinesiology biomechanics um i used to do i used to be an amateur bodybuilder um i you know uh, i love exercise but i think it's important to look at it from a very honest um, and rational perspective, which is exercise is important, but it's not the most important thing. Exercise is part of the recipe. It is not the recipe by itself. All right. Um, let's see. Michelle says, according to the physical therapist that I current that I'm currently working with, he states that I have rather loose joints. I have a lot of clunking in my shoulder joints. Are there any exercises to help with this condition? Uh, yes, there's many possible exercises and sequences of exercise that could help with this, but it's hard to say. Um, for certain without any photos to go off of, any um, posture to evaluate. Uh, best guess without any visuals to go off of would be to use the shoulder pain routine. And that's found inside the Optimized Self First Aid Kit, which is found inside the Optimized Self Arsenal, which is found inside the Optimized Self Dojo. Hopefully you got that. If not, you can always go back and replay this. Um, Optimize Self Arsenal, which is inside Optimize, Optimize Self Dojo. And uh, also included in that Optimize Self, oops, something popped up here. Um, also included in that Optimize Self First Aid Kit, uh, along with the shoulder pain routine, is 19 other routines for a total of 20 uh, exercise routines that are designed to help relieve and ultimately eliminate 20 of the most common chronic pain symptoms, shoulder pain, knee pain, hip pain, lower back pain, upper back pain, scoliosis, carpal tunnel syndrome, the list goes on and on. Um, so that's included in there as well. Um, but yeah, do you know you can definitely be rest assured that this is simply due to a muscular imbalance, nothing more. Um, let's see, I always ask people what would they like to see in their inbox from optimizedself.ninja. Michelle says, I would love to see a suggestion of daily exercise to work the entire body. If you have any idea on the best movements to keep the body in top form, that are quick and simple to do on a daily basis. Um, so I already may mention to the Optimize Myself First Aid Kit, if you have any chronic pain symptoms, I would definitely start there. Uh, then look at the Correcting Common Posture Deviations section that's also found inside the Optimize Self Arsenal, um, as well as the Optimizing Your Exercise module. This definitely goes into how to uh, exercise efficiently so that you're only spending 10, 30 minutes tops uh, exercising per day, not necessarily even um, every day, uh, but this goes much deeper and wider into that. Um, and all of that can be found inside uh, the Optimize Self Dojo. So definitely check that out. Uh, again, already made mention too, but I'll just repeat it one more, is that if you've addressed the other six foundations of health, your breathing, hydration, sleep, nutrition, stress, uh, and movement, then you don't have to try so hard in terms of exercise. And you don't have to, to make as much time available. You don't have to think, oh, I gotta exercise today. I got to spend more time exercising. No, if, if, you, if you live better, and by live better, I mean understanding how your body works and the synergistic value of the foundations of health, and if you use that to your advantage, then you, again, there's no need, like I said, unless you're trying to uh, be a competitive athlete, that you need any more than 30 minutes. For most people, it's more of like seven to 20 minutes, including warm up and cool down. Um, so that's the good news. Um, let's see. Um, and, you know, Michelle, I'll definitely leave you with. Um, you know, I would love to have you as a member of the Optimized Self Dojo. I think there's a lot of stuff that you would benefit that's included in there. 
Um, first and foremost, you've got the built-in accountability and support, kind of like a mastermind group of not only myself, but the fellow, your fellow ninjas and ninjets, the other members in there. So even when you first get in, it's a, a kind of a private Facebook group. I always ask people, hey, introduce yourself, say what you're here to accomplish, what you're struggling with. And other people, I'm really happy to say, they'll reach out and say, you know, hey, I'm maybe I dealt with that in the past, or um, I'm dealing with that now, or something similar, or here's what I might recommend. It's a great community where we are crowdsourcing our collective knowledge and more importantly, our collective experience to help empower one another so that everybody is not so reliant on, and not, not to say anything bad about, but, but doctors and chiropractors and PTs and health professionals, experts and gurus, that includes myself as well, being 13 plus years in the business in many uh, ways and forms. So you've got the built-in accountability and support, which is huge. Uh, you've got the Optimized Self Arsenal, which is a collection of, uh, of, of guides and resources and video tutorials that'll show you how to um, optimize each of the seven foundations of your health. And then included in that as well are tools you can use to make that simpler and more efficient. Uh, that way you can get from where wherever you currently are to wherever you want to be as quickly and simply and efficiently as possible. And then last but certainly not least, uh, every Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we do live trainings, uh, also what we refer to as hangouts. Uh, we got one coming up tomorrow. Uh, so if you join, please join us for that. Uh, I know tomorrow we're going to be uh, kind of, we're going to be doing some cooking, actually, uh, making some uh, amazing bulletproof coffee. And I think uh, my wife Anya is going to be demonstrating how to make um, some, what is it, dark chocolate chip uh zucchini bread that's almond based uh, one with eggs and one without that i think uses chai seeds as a substitute because uh, one of my sensitivities is to eggs um eggs are great macronutrient wise but unfortunately i have uh some digestive issues with them so i kind of steer clear of them uh and we'll talk about other things too whatever other people deem as important we'll answer questions while we're doing that uh but it's fun it's educational you know that's really what we're all about is having fun while Kicking ass through life's design. That's the tagline. Um, so definitely check out the dojo. Um, I'll, I'll link to it in the email I send you to this. Um, and you can just find out more about everything that's included over on optimizedself.ninja. And uh, let's see. You already took the you already took the test. And let's see. I think that's about it. But if you do join the dojo, please definitely when you get in there. Um, you know, you know, reach out to me and let me know, especially about the job situation. I would really love to uh, talk with you more in depth about that. If you're and, and and if you're okay, even you coming on as 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 a, as a guest on video, and we can talk that out and hash that out together, uh, because I think that's something that a lot of people, if not everyone, struggles with at some point in time in their life. Um, you know, and something that I that I've seen in 13 plus years hold people back. So maybe that's something that. As, as you learn, others can learn. Um, and that's what I always love about having people on the show is, is, you know, they're learning, I'm learning, and everybody listening and watching is learning from our collective uh, mistakes, but also from our collective successes. And uh, yeah, it's just a really, really great community. So I hope you'll join, hope to see you in there. Um, if you found this, uh, these answers helpful too, I would definitely appreciate on YouTube, uh, like the video. If you can think of anyone that you think this or any of the other answers I give in this episode, share it with someone that you know and care about. I know they would really appreciate you thinking about them. I know I would appreciate you helping spread the word and sharing the love. And uh, let's see, last but certainly not least, if you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button to the Optimize Self Ninja YouTube channel. That way you can stay up to date with all the recent happenings and going on uh, over on Optimize ninja all right anyways michelle thank you very much for like i said following up taking the test uh you're awesome and i look forward to hearing from you again and hopefully seeing you inside the dojo all right take care all right now we're going to move on to the next question i'm gonna grab some water the next two are a bit shorter uh we only got two more for today um and that's because um these people have yet to take the optimized self test, so I don't have as much info to go off of. Uh, this one is an 
an email, a message from Jeremy and it's in response to a post I did, a video post on scoliosis. This was back when I was uh, doing the postureguy.com and by say was doing, the site is still up. You can go there and check it out. Actually, I'll, uh, I've got to remember to put a link to this, to this uh, scoliosis post that he um, messaged from uh, so you guys can check it out. I just haven't added to the posture.com since late last year. I want to say October, November, maybe. Um, anyways, Jeremy says, oh, by the way, hi, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy says, hi there, Justin. I just stumbled upon your website after a hard kickboxing class. I am a very active person, age 21. I've been building muscle as of late. However, I am noticing a slight inequality while lifting. Uh, and then he goes into his squats, uh, but goes to the right about half an inch, deadlift, thrust left hip slightly more forward. Uh, watch it, uh, watching your videos has made me realize that I have a slight scoliosis. Uh, this I can correct with time. However, there is more. For as long as I can remember, my shoulder blades would grind every time I would move them back or down. Recently, I have been trying to correct my posture, which has been difficult as I work at desk job and I tend to slouch more when I sit. I know that the posture will come with time. What I'm not sure of is the grinding shoulder blades. My left has always done it. Recently, my right has been as well. I was wondering if there is anything I can do to fix this. I feel like all the muscles around them are preventing movement and grinding whatever I try to. Can you please help? Uh, yeah, certainly. So. Uh, Jeremy, the, the uneven squat sounds like it's most likely due to some kind of pelvic slash hip asymmetry. That's Carmen you heard, our, our foster pup. Say hi, Carmen. <laughs> She's a cutie. Um, so yeah, the uneven squat sounds like it's most likely due to a kind of pelvic slash hip asymmetry. Um, without any pictures to go off of, any um, postural photos to evaluate. It's hard to say for certain, but you did give a good description of you know what happens in the squat and the deadlift. Um, so I'm gonna link up some posts I've done before in the show notes over on YouTube under mention links. And um, these are ones on uh, hip elevation, pelvic rotation, pelvic tilt disparity, um, and then also what's known as uh, fem femoral uh, glide syndrome, uh, usually anterior, so femoral anterior glide syndrome, um, or possibly, um, I always mispronounce one, femoral acetabular impingement, uh, FAI. Thank goodness for acronyms. Um, <laughs> love anatomy and biomechanics, but sometimes they just make things so hard to pronounce. Um, so it could be those. I've actually dealt with uh, femoral anterior gliding syndrome myself, as well as uh, pel other pelvic and hip asymmetries like elevated hip, pelvic rotation, pelvic tilt disparities. Um, so again, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the the things I'm gonna I'm gonna list. But what I would do probably first is kind of like a functional test to, to determine, because by your explanation, um, you know, it said here, let me just check this real quick. When you squat, your, your butt goes to the right about half an inch, and when you deadlift, your left hip thrusts forward. So it sounds like you're missing, your left hip is moving forward in that deadlift because there's some missing range of motion in your right hip. So then I always tell people when trying to figure this stuff out is ask, keep asking why and we kind of reverse engineer and work backwards. Now you also say that you have grinding shoulders. So obviously there's some muscular imbalance in your shoulders which are causing the shoulder blades not to be held in a correct position. And when you try to move them down and back, you get that grinding. So here's what I would look is go ahead and do a squat like normal and you'll probably see what you described. Butt goes um, half inch to the right. Now go ahead and do that squat. But before you squat down, go ahead and put your hands on your head and pull your elbows back and keep them like that and squat down and notice if you see if you notice any difference if you do if the squat seems more even then what that telling you that functional test by putting your hands on your head and pulling your elbows back is that uh the imbalance in your hips the reason why your your uh your butt is is going about a half inch uh, to to the right is because of an imbalance in your shoulders. So there's some shoulder blade disparity, difference left to right, that's causing your hips to compensate and that what you're seeing in the squat happen. If so, the cause, the effect is down on the hips, but the cause is up in the shoulders and that's what you want to address. 
If that doesn't correct it, then what I would suggest doing is doing a squat, but elevating your heels uh, on some books or some 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 plates, some weight plates. Um, you know, maybe an inch or two off the ground, and go ahead and squat and see if that corrects that imbalance in the squat. If so, then that's most likely coming from your um, from a loss of range of motion in one or both of your ankles, and you should focus a little bit more on your attention on the lower body. Um, and then you can even try both: have your heels uh, up on the plates and your hands on the head, and squat and see between those three: number one, hands on the head, elbows pulled back; number two, heels up on the weight plates; and number three, hands on the head with uh, elbows pulled back and heels on the plates. Which one is best? If it's just the hands on the head, really focus your attention on correcting the the shoulders and shoulder blade, right? It's it's more of your upper body that's causing the compensations that are occurring in your squat and deadlift that you're noticing in your hip area. If it's the putting your heels up on the plate, that seems to give you the best a uh, squat, then really focus your attention on your feet, ankles, and lower body, and that's what's really giving you most of the the most of the cause of the problem is your lower body. If it happens to be both, then you're kind of uh, there. There's some dysfunctions both in your upper body and lower body that are causing uh, the mid body, your hips, to compensate. In which case, you need to address both. Um, and I'm going to give you some tools that you can use to address these. So I'm going to. Uh, put some links down in the mention links section over on YouTube to a couple posts I've done. Uh, one is, um, well, they're, the first three are kind of part of a series. They're correcting common posture deviations. One's on hip slash pelvic elevation. The other's on pelvic rotation. The other is on anterior pelvic tilt with externally rotated femurs, uh, what I, also what I call athlete hips. Um, the next is uh, titled one, two, three, correcting pelvic disparity. Um, I think, obviously, from this one, you're already on the scoliosis. I'll include that. I know you've seen, but other people who are interested in this might not have seen, so I'll, I'll link that one up. Um, and then two others that are really good that I think that are important for especially athletes to take a look at is don't confuse hip flexor weakness for tightness. And another one I did a video post uh, last year called short and tight versus long and taut athletic posture types. And last but certainly not least is one more uh, correcting common posture deviations uh, about shoulder rounding. And that'll especially help to kind of uh, even out the, the grinding in your shoulders. All right. And I got a little bit more for you. Let me just grab some water here. Hmm. Uh, now, we talked a lot about exercise. We talked a lot about anatomy and biomechanics. And I know you wrote me in from a post I did on scoliosis on theposturaguy.com. Obviously, you're watching this now. I'll send you a link to it. You're watching this uh, either on, on YouTube under the Optimize Self Ninja channel or on the website optimizeself.ninja. And the reason being is optimizeself.ninja is the successor to theposturaguy.com. So it's everything I learned doing postural alignment therapy for seven and a half years, plus what I learned before and plus what I learned after. And so, so that's where this answer is coming from. And I'm gonna totally undercut and undermine all the exercise stuff that I just told you. It's still good, but here's how I'm gonna undercut and undermine myself is I, I want you to keep in mind that as important as postural alignment uh, exercise and corrective exercise, exercises are, they pale in comparison to the six other foundations of health, uh, those being breathing, hydration, sleep, nutrition, stress, and movement, not to mention your environment and mindset, both of which are forever positively or negatively influencing, influencing in some way, uh, your pain, posture, and performance. All right. So it's important that you treat your your symptoms or your functional impairments with a therapy, a method, and or system, whatever you want to refer to it as that you're using to address those symptoms, um, with something that treats your whole body as a unit. That doesn't take in that doesn't just focus on the biomechanics, but also takes into consideration the biochemical side, the neurological side, and the environmental aspects of your health. So I made mention of those uh, in the foundations of health, um, and it's also important to remember that the human body. I've said this probably 
two other times in this episode, but it's important to repeat just in case you didn't see that. The human body is a stimulus response organism that's responding to stimulus 24 seven without prejudice. So it's what you do the majority of the time that matters, not your best intentions. So as important as exercise is, what I've learned and what I tell people is focus a little less on exercise and more on living better since living is what you do the majority of the time and thus has a greater impact on your, excuse me, on your overall well-being uh, than, than exercise alone. And a perfect example of this is making sure you're drinking a minimum of half your body weight in ounces of water per day probably more because you say you do kickboxing and everything so you have to replenish what you perspire out um and make sure i'm talking pure water not you know gatorade or other drinks although electrolyte drinks do have their place in athletics i agree um but but pure water uh half your body weight in ounces minimum bare minimum the reason being is because without that, your body is going to have a tough time producing enough synovial fluid from your shoulders bursa sacs to sufficiently, um, I just forgot the word. Uh, see, I need more water. See, cognitive, uh, <laughs> cognitive performance is not up to bar. Give me a second. <laughs> uh, you won't have enough synovial fluid to properly lubricate your shoulder blades and around that area. So actually being properly hydrated will help you, uh, your shoulder blades move more, as well as all the exercise routines that I just listed. It'll make sure that the, um, as you attempt to restore uh, balance and dynamic tension, uh, balance left to right, dynamic tension being front to back, balance of, your, of all your musculature and connective tissues, uh, those results will only be short term if you're not properly hydrated. If your muscle tissue is like dried up beef jerky, there's not too much give to it. But if you hydrate it and get it back to like a nice supple filet mignon like it's designed to be, then there's going to be a lot more uh, adaptiveness to those tissues. And the results you get from the exercise are going to be much more long term. Um, I hesitate to say permanent because if you think about it, nothing's really permanent in terms of health. It's always fluctuating body's a stimulus response organism, yada, yada, yada. But you, I think you get what I'm getting at here, uh, is it'll be more long-term and the results you'll get from any of the exercise you do will be we, will be much better given that you're properly hydrated. Um, we talked about hydration. Um, another good one is, you know, you can use the exercise and use the functional test that I gave you to see, you know, why your squat's uneven. The other is just simply sitting on the floor, like I am right now. Um, you can also go into, you know, kind of a, a paleo squat. Just start assuming the positions or trying to get in the position that you find difficult, uh, even without any weight, without, you know, a bar. And, you know, if going a little to one side while with the knee out is challenging or difficult for you, little by little, just go in there, you know, take what the body will give you, proceed with caution, and just try to improve, you know, 1% each time as I'm trying to like rock into this right hip because that's one part that I have difficulty, you know, getting into. And just like bending a paper clip little by little, then it becomes easier to bend. You're going to find that you, you kind of make these little breakthroughs into some of the range of motion, the degrees, if you kind of think a uh, geometry aspect uh, that you once used to think, oh my gosh, I couldn't do that. And now you can. So again, your body is going to respond to whatever you do most, not necessarily your best intentions. And by best intentions, I mean exercise routines, unless of course that is what you do the most. Um, but again, I always tell people, if you focus on living better and making healthier choices, you don't have to put as much time and effort and energy into exercise. Um, it's 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 the working smarter approach rather than working harder. I always kind of jokingly say hard work is fine, but let's leave it as a uh, <laughs> as kind of a last resort if we can. All right. Um, and I think that is about it. Um, let me check real quick. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy, I would love to give you more specific answers, um, but in order to do so, I need a little bit more info from you. So what I would suggest is kind of a next step is head on over to optimizeself.ninja. 
you'll see the uh, logo at the top, the video player. We can watch this and other episodes of the Optimize Self show. And then under that, you'll see a big red orange button. Go ahead and click on that, and that's where you can access. You, know, you put your email in, and then you're sent a link to take the Optimize Self test. Uh, and in there, you can ask me some follow-up questions, uh, so that way I have a bit more information to go off of to give you more specific advice and suggestions. Basically what you'd be doing is you're helping me help you uh, and then I can follow up with you like I did Michelle in this show because she wrote me a question earlier and then I suggested she take the Optimize Self test. She did and that was who I was responding to or addressing uh, in the previous uh, question before you. And I can do the same to you in the future, in a future episode of the Optimize Self show. Um, so definitely do that. And then also while you're on OptimizeSelf.Ninja, scroll below where uh, you click on that button to take the Optimize Self test and take a look, see what's included uh, in the Optimize Self Dojo. I think there's a lot of stuff in there that you would really, really benefit from. Um, I won't go into too much detail because I already kind of did earlier on, um, but also it's really uh, simply laid out all the specific things that are included uh, in there. So go take a look at that. And uh, I would say if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, or if you're watching this Optimize Self Not Ninja, you can sim you can watch this on YouTube by just clicking on the title at the top, and depending on your web browser settings, it'll either open up a new tab or a new window. Um, if you found this uh, beneficial, uh, please like the video. Uh, if you can think of anyone you know that you care about that you think, hey, they would benefit from this or any of the other answers I give on this episode, uh, please go ahead and share it with them, uh, whether it be over email or whatever social media platform that you and that other person uses, uh, share it with them. I know they would really appreciate you thinking about them. I know I would appreciate you helping spread the word and sharing the love, so to speak. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe to the Optimize Self Ninja YouTube channel. That way you can stay up to date with all the recent happenings and going on. I do two of these uh, Optimize Self Show episodes a week, and but I also put out daily short videos. Um, they're 15 seconds or less uh, little short videos. I refer to them as catalysts of the day. So they're questions, facts, thoughts, challenges, I think, I don't know if I already said quotes, um, call to action, things like that of the day that uh, you can use kind of catalyst for positive change in your life. Uh, to help you, you know, optimize your health, fitness, wellness, overall well-being, all that good jazz. So, uh, yeah, if you can do that, I'd really appreciate it, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you again, uh, you know, via the Optimize Self Test, and hopefully seeing you also inside the Optimize Self Dojo. If you have any other questions about, uh, you know, the dojo or anything, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. And uh, like I said, look forward to hearing from you again. All right, take care. All right, we got one more. Let me grab some water. And we will wrap this up. OK. So uh, Rohan uh, sent in a comment via YouTube on a video that I did. Gosh, this must have been two years ago, but it's actually one of the more popular videos I think that I put out uh, called, Do You Have to Stretch Your Hamstrings to Touch Your Toes? Uh, Wink, wink. The answer is no, you do not. Um, but Rohan had a question here. and. Um, see what I can do to answer. So Rohan says, great video. Rohan, thank you. Uh, and hi, by the way. Uh, he says, I suffered a disc prolapse, uh, for those of you that know, basically kind of like a slip disc, uh, in between L4, L5, and L5S1, and am recovering from it gradually. It's been about five weeks since I have been discharged from the hospital. I have been going regularly for physiotherapy, and toe touch is the one I'm not able to do quite yet. Uh, my question is approximately how many weeks from suffering a disc prolapse should I even attempt this exercise to avoid a re relapse? My physios are asking me to practice the toe touch in a sitting position, but I am unable to do it because they have said my hamstrings are too taut. Uh, but I'm afraid five weeks is too short of a time to attempt this. Is this true? Um, so Rohan, what I would advise is you know always keep in mind that muscles don't tighten up just to piss you off, contrary to popular belief, even though they may be really frustrating. Um, there's always a reason that they do so, and it's actually usually to protect you from further harm. So if, for example, in this case, your hamstrings are tight, it's for a reason. And if it's painfully tight, the question I would recommend that I would ask you 
I guess that I'm posing to you, but you should also ask your question your, yourself in the future and anyone else watching this in the same or similar uh, situation as Rohan is, it's very easy to be mad at or scared of pain when you don't understand what it means. So instead, change where you're viewing that from from a few degrees and say, okay, what is my pain trying to tell me about the cause of my pain? So, or for example, you know, okay, my hamstrings are tight. What are my tight hamstrings trying to tell me about the cause of my pain? And keep in mind too that the body works together as a unit. And so it's important that you treat it as such. Um, those that have seen the show before, seen some of my other videos also know that the, that I've said time and time again, the site of the pain, or in this case, tension or pain slash tension is rarely, if ever the cause, unless you've been shot, stabbed, fell down some stairs, you had some acute injury, someone hit you with a baseball bat, shot you, something like that, you know, then what the cause is. But if it's chronic pain or chronic stiffness and tightness, um, it's not always where you feel the stiffness and tightness, but when you're feeling it, then it's very easy to get fixated on it. I know, been there, done that. So if your hamstrings are taut and, and you and your, your physio, your PT or whoever feels like that's what's holding you back, you need to feed some slack to your hamstrings. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, you can do that by strengthening, stretching and or mobilizing above and below them. Right, so look look just to above and just below the hamstrings and look at what can you do to those parts of the body to feed slack to the hamstrings. Because if, if your hamstrings are my shirt, right, and it's really taut over here, and here's the hamstrings, ooh, that doesn't look good. Well, you can try to fix the hamstring, but look, it keeps, it keeps going back. But what if you fed slack up here and that fed slack to the hamstrings? Hopefully that visual <laughs> makes sense, and I didn't wrinkle my shirt for for nothing. Uh, no, I think I think you get what I'm what I'm saying here. Um, is 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 don't just look at the hamstrings. Look at what's above and below the hamstrings that's causing them to be tight. And you know, as you proceed, take what the body will give you. Start with that, and then proceed with caution as you progress. And keep in mind that, I know I keep saying keep in mind, there's a lot of things to keep in mind, um, but keep in mind that the results you gain from exercise will always be limited or predetermined by the quality of your other foundations of health, by which I mean your breathing, hydration, sleep, nutrition, stress, and, and movement. So make sure that you address all of those as well as things like your environment and mindset um, all of which are forever influencing things like your pain, posture, and performance. And because you know the human body is a stimulus response organism that responds to stimulus 24 seven without prejudice. So it's what you do the majority of the time that matters, not your best intentions. Um, and just to be clear, exercise is important, uh, not saying that it isn't, but it's not the most important thing. Exercise is part of the recipe. It isn't the recipe in and of itself. And so just to, just as one example here, as far as, you know, making sure you address the other foundations of health is, um, you know, hydration, right? Um, and this I've seen time and time again, especially with tight hamstrings. Um, and if the tight hamstrings are, are holding you back from having um, the, the proper amount of pelvic tilt or pelvic rotation around the head of your femur, if that's what's holding you back and you go, okay, I need to feed slack to my hamstrings so I can move that pelvis more so that I can touch my toes. Well, guess what? The best exercise routine that helps feed some slack to your hamstrings isn't going to do you much good if you're chronically dehydrated. Because what is dehydrated muscle? It's jerky, right? Beef jerky. You ever try to stretch beef jerky? <laughs> Either A, doesn't go anywhere, or B, it rips and tears. And I'm sure that's not what you want to happen to your hamstrings or something to let go in your lower back. 
So it's important, especially when you're recovering, to be consuming a bare minimum of half your body weight in ounces of water. Right now, since you're recovering, I would say maybe even 20 to 30% more than half your body weight in ounces of water. So that way, when you do an exercise routine, whether it's what I suggest in the, um, the routine and do you have to stretch your hamstrings to touch your toes or what your PT or physio says to do, that way your muscles are in the best hydrated state to adapt to that stimulus you're feeding it via the, the exercise, whether it be strengthening, stretching, self-myofascial release techniques, joint mobilization techniques, what have you, whatever tool it is you use, you want to make sure that you're bringing to those exercises, to those movements uh, type principles, uh, hydrated meat, basically nice supple filet mignon so that it can adapt to that to that stimulus, all right? So that's one example um, is, is hydration. And, you know, so we already went over hamstrings. There is a routine in, um, do you have to stretch your hamstrings to touch your toes? Definitely use that one. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head because it's been years since I made that. I know, um, is it a static extension position, upper spinal floor twist in cats and dogs? I have to check on that. If so, I'm really surprised I just remember that, but that, that actually sounds about right. Um, so yeah, you can definitely do those, and those will definitely address your upper body to feed slack to, to, your, to your body, but also look at maybe lowering the body. You know, If that doesn't give you the release you need, the range of motion you're looking for, um, look at you know, maybe doing something like a gravity drop or a wall drop, something to help release the tension in your calves and you get more dorsiflexion in your ankle. Um, also, there's one more thing I was keeping in mind. Oh, uh, that you can actually engage your, your hip flexors, um, especially your iliopsoas, which goes from your inner thigh through your pelvis and attaches to every lumbar vertebra of your lower back because a lot of times people think and i covered this in the video so uh rohan i'm sure you already know this but others may not is a lot of people think touching your toes is a flexibility movement and i'll agree to that about 10 to 20 percent but a lot of people think it's 100 percent flexibility it's actually not um it's actually mostly a strength movement and before you go what what the hell are you talking about let me let me show you here um, so I'm, I'll back up here, here we go. And so if I'm standing here and I've been down to touch my toes and I'm only going to try to stretch from my hamstrings and my lower back, that's about as far as I can go. Okay. That, that's it. But if I move my pelvic bones around the head of my femur, like basically if I take it out and I go like that, now watch. I'm not bending my back. I'm moving my pelvic bones around the head of my femur, and now I can touch, uh, you know, touch the ground with with ease. And then how I'm doing that is not by trying to stretch my hamstrings. Yes, you do require a certain amount of hamstring flexibility and lower back flexibility, but you require far far less than what you would initially think, because what they're attached to your pelvic bones, right? that I'm moving around like that. So it's this movement like that and then continuing it as I go lower that a lot of people are missing and that's why they struggle to touch their toes. It's not usually because they're not flexible enough, it's because that they're not able to engage their iliopsoas to continue to move their pelvis around the head of the femur so that then their torso can come closer to the front of their thighs and their hands can reach their toes or the ground. And the same mechanics apply in sitting, but I would actually say that that's harder because when you sit on the ground, right? Imagine if I'm sitting on the ground, the, the opposition of my body weight and the floor pushes my thigh bone towards the front of my hip socket, which actually is going to, there's going to be more likely of a chance that I'm going to be getting some type of impingement there. So standing in that regard is easier. You might say it's harder uh, because you have to hold your body weight upright. Uh, really, when I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, what I would suggest doing is 
um, doing that toe touch with your, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see me back here, is go to a wall and then put something in front of you like a stool or a chair. So that way, because a lot of people when they do this, they'll push their hips back like that and they'll do this thing, but with the wall you can't, and then put something in front of you and as you feel comfortable, you can go further and further down until the point where your heels and your butt is on the ground and your hands are on the floor as well, okay? But yeah, definitely use caution. And like I said, have something in front of you. And when I first started doing that, yeah, I had to use a chair about 18, 20 inches off the ground. And then little by little, as I gained more range of motion in my pelvis um, through engaging my hip flexors, I was able to get down to the ground like you like you just saw earlier. So that was actually a longer explanation than I thought. But Rohan, hopefully all that uh, helps you. I would love to uh, give you more specific advice, especially in terms of lifestyle and how to optimize your other foundations of health. Um, but so I can give you more specific feedback to your unique situation, what I would ask you to do is go to OptimizeSelf.Ninja and you're probably already there if you're watching this because I'll send you a link to this to view. And under the video player, you'll see a big red, orange, yellow button. So click here to take the Optimize Self test and a few other words. Um, go ahead and click that button, put your email in, and then um, you'll be sent a link to take the Optimize Self test. And in there, uh, it's kind of a, a way for you to self-evaluate how you're doing in those foundations of health, as well as ask me some some, some more questions, some follow-up questions. And basically, what you'll be doing is helping me help you. You'll be providing me with the information I need to give you more specific uh, uh, feedback and answers, like I said, that's unique to your situation. So, you know, please follow up with me on that, so that way I can answer uh, those questions in an upcoming episode of the Optimize Self Show. Also, while you're here on OptimizeSelf.Ninja, um, go ahead and scroll below and check out what's included uh, inside the Optimize Self Dojo, because I think that you would really, really benefit from being a member of, of that as well. And if you have any questions about anything, please don't hesitate to reach out and, uh, and ask me, all right? Um, and if you wanna see this on YouTube and see all the mention links, because they're not, the mention links are not on OptimizeSelf.Ninja, uh, just click the, in the video player that you're watching this on OptimizeSelf.Ninja, just click on the title at the top of the video player. And depending on your uh, browser settings, uh, it'll open up this video on YouTube, either in a new tab or new window. And then in the description area, uh, scroll below to where it says mention links and you'll be able to see that as well as timestamps uh, that are hyperlinked to different parts of the video where I address other people's questions and maybe there's something there that you'll find helpful. So check that out and while you're there on YouTube, uh, you know, if you found this answer or any of the answers I gave to anyone else helpful, uh, please like the video. If you can think of anyone that these answers can help benefit, uh, you know, a friend, family member, someone that you you know, care about. Uh, I know they would appreciate you forward this on to them. You can share it with them uh, through YouTube on various social media platforms. You can email it to them. Uh, again, I know they would appreciate you thinking about them. I would appreciate you helping, you know, spread the spread the love and you know, sharing, sharing the love, spreading the word, all that good jazz. Um, and then uh, last but certainly not least, if you can subscribe to the Optimize Self channel, that would be great because then you would be kind of on the up and up. You would know all the recent happenings and going ons uh, inside at the Optimize Self um, .ninja ecosphere, for lack of a better term. Um, you know, the, the, the Optimize Self show, two episodes that come out a week, the Catalyst of the Day videos, uh, they're short 15 second videos that I put out each day. You would um, be kept up to date on all those when those come out. All right. Anyways, uh, thank you for writing in and for your question. And I look forward to hearing back from you again uh, inside the Optimize Self test and hopefully seeing you inside the Optimize Self dojo. All right. Thanks. All right, and with that, I'm gonna take one more drink of water and we will close this out. Um, yeah, so that was a good show, a lot of good questions. Um, I'm really happy to say that I see the quality of questions going up with each episode and I see a significant increase in the quality of questions. And I hope everybody takes this the right way. Um, I don't believe that there is dumb questions, but I definitely think there are degrees 
of, of, of different quality of questions. And the reason I always point people to taking the Optimize Self test, which I'm actually which I'm actually working on revising and making better, is because whenever I see someone take the Optimize Self test, they always ask better quality questions. And I definitely believe that the quality of one's life can be reflected by the quality of the questions they ask of someone else or of themselves. And so I'm doing my part by, you know, I'm gonna try to ask in the optimized self test better questions so I get better answers from people taking it so that then I could provide better answers and suggestions and advice to people that's specific to their unique situation, whatever it is they're struggling with, whatever it is they're trying to overcome you know, um, so yeah, that's why the optimized self test is so so useful, and uh, you know that's that's also kind of the point of the optimized self dojo is really to crowdsource the members' collective knowledge and more importantly experience, um, and and just help one another become the best versions of ourselves possible, um, and then to empower people to to be their own health professional, expert, guru, whatever you want to refer to it as. And I'm happy to report that that's what's happening. And so if you're watching this and you're interested in what's included, just go to optimizeself.ninja, scroll below the video player and the, the optimize self test uh, button. You'll see everything that's included in there. And um, you just, yeah, just scroll down, you'll see all the things that are included inside the dojo. Um, and granted, yeah, I'm biased. You know, it's my group. I love the members in there. Um, but I, I think a lot of people, I won't say it's for everybody, but for a lot of people, I think they would benefit from being a, a part of, I guess you can kind of refer to it as a mastermind because it's got accountability and support. It has weekly meetups and it has, uh, uh, resources, tools, and guides that you can use to, you know, whether it's whether it's you're trying to rediscover your health, upgrade your fitness, and or optimize your wellness, it's something in there is going to help you, and it's got you covered. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, if for whatever reason you think the dojo isn't you, but you like the show and you want to support the show, uh, then go ahead and head over to. I'll actually make this little um, this little deal here. Boom, optimize self dot ninja forward slash support. And there you can make a donation. Could be a dollar, ten dollars, could be a one-time payment, could be you know monthly. You choose how much, you choose how often. Um, and you know, I would appreciate it as well as everyone else who enjoys the show. Um, because you know, that's how all this whole thing is financed. So for those of you that have already made uh, contributions uh, you know, to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, for those of you that have joined the dojo, that have bought in memberships, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate it all, and I love interacting with each and every one of you, uh, you know, every day. So it's great. That's why I get up and do what it is I do. Anyways, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, this has been awesome. Love today's show. And uh, dojo members, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going to be doing some uh, some cooking. Uh, if you didn't catch earlier, I may mention too. I'm going to be making some uh, my favorite uh, beverage, bulletproof coffee. And uh, Anya, aka Mrs. Ninja, is going to be making some uh, almond flour dark chocolate chip zucchini bread. Mm, yum! Getting hungry just thinking about it. Um, She's going to be making two, actually, one that uses eggs and the other that uses chai seeds as a substitution because, as some of you know, I don't do so well with eggs. Some of you that may, great. So there's options and choices for everybody. And, of course, as always, we'll be answering any questions that you have uh, during that time as well. All right. Uh, so, Dojo members, I'll see, we'll see you tomorrow. And everyone else, we will see you uh, next week, Tuesday, on the next episode of the Optimized Self Show. Until then, take care and be a good human.